We're live. We are live. Woo! Oh my goodness. We're gonna wait for people to trickle into the chat. Just a little trickle into the chat. Say hello. Say hello, everybody. Thank you. I got a delivery. Um, <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing today? Pretty good. Yeah. Are you doing well? Yeah. I'm not sleepy anymore. Good. <laughs> Stop raining. Everybody's doing great. Well, I want to say to the audience, welcome to Stembassy. Can you guys hear me okay? Welcome to Stembassy. All right. This is the premier location on the internet to have uh, a good time talking about science. We are a group of five scientists who come together every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to discuss hot topics, current events, and issues that are near and dear to our hearts, all with a smile on our faces, right? And a laugh in our spirits, yes. So I want everyone to just introduce themselves, okay? I would like for our regular hosts to start and then we will introduce yeah. our special oh, guest host themselves okay i would like for our oh we lost to mook again i i know i did it for i did that for a second oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to introduce our special guest host um in just a few okay so ariana take it away all right hi i'm ariana i am a wildlife ecologist working on my master's in wildlife ecology, and I study uh, landscape connectivity issues with bobcats in New Jersey. Amanda. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Amanda. I'm currently an undergraduate finishing up at Florida State University, and I'm going into a PhD program for biology in the fall. Super excited. Woo! Oh, yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Pop it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I gotta grab. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Chanel. I am a cell molecular biologist. I also have a DRPH or a doctorate degree in public health. And my goal is to one day save the world. Have you ever seen Contagion? Yes. I want to be Lawrence Fishburne when I grow up. Yes. Right. Passing it to you, Jay. <laughs> this way. <laughs> One day we're gonna work this out and we're we gonna are. Have yeah, we are. So hello, I'm Jay. I am a UI UX engineer. Um, I'm also a international psychology master's student, and um I am just really happy to be here today. It's not raining for oh. two seconds, so I'm just I'm happy today. Happy Easter, everybody, and yeah. everyone I see you. Happy, hello. Happy, happy. Hey. And we have a special guest tonight. They're having a few technical difficulties, but we're going to um, introduce them once they get up and running. Guys, how do you want to move forward since uh, we, we're we having a little technical oh. <laughs> issue here? Um, I mean, we can do the food. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got, yeah. got some food here. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. I think that's... um. That's a great topic. Okay, you want to start? Since you have such we such controversial food pairings here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So as we're waiting for our guests to get settled in our stream, we want to know from our audience members what is a food pairing that is controversial that you uh, partake in? May it be in your <laughs> geographical area or in your cultural space. And don't give us no pineapple on pizza. We've heard it before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pineapple on pizza, that's yeah. an old that, argument. You want right. to hear new things. Like, let it be something that when you tell people, oh, this is what I eat, or we eat it all the time, and people are like, ugh, what the heck? <laughs> everybody got that. Everybody. Just think about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go first because I thought about this. <laughs> I'm gonna get this out of the way. Let me tell you something. Don't come for me in the comments, okay? Just try it, all right? Okay, mm -hmm. so y'all know I am from Memphis, Tennessee, right? And so what we eat down here is fish and spaghetti. Catfish. It has to be fried catfish and spaghetti. Yes, there's meat in the spaghetti. No, the fish is not the same with the spaghetti. 
It is like a meal. There are some people, our neighbors in Chattanooga, Tennessee, sometimes somewhere in Alabama, Missouri, they don't do it like that. There's chicken. <laughs> it's a whole deal. It's like fried catfish, spaghetti with meat in it. Then there's a slice of white bread. It has to be the Wonder White Bread because <laughs> it has to come from that. I know y'all eat Sara Lee, honey, we oat and all that. I understand. <laughs> but we'll do that. It's Wonder White Bread. And then, you know, you have like greens or something else that you want on the side. Don't mix it with broccoli. Don't do that. Don't do that. Broccoli is the weird part. The broccoli is the weird part. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Please get her in the comments. (laughs) Please please tear her up in the comments. I'm I'm not sure about the fish and then the side of spaghetti. I'm just. I'm not sure about it. Spaghetti is like a real by itself. Yeah, that's what people say. And then when people see say that, they're just closed minded. Let me tell you something. You put it together, it's gonna save your life. Now, is this catfish yeah. fried or is it? Yes, it has bread. Don't bake the. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> bake it. Don't do that. It's not a healthy meal. Is what we eat. <laughs> Wait, somebody's oh, agreeing with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where Kim, please don't don't hype her up, Cam. Don't hype her up. <laughs> don't encourage her to play here. Okay. <laughs> so let me say this. Do y'all think that hot sauce on Doritos is weird? I think it's quite disgusting. It's already hot. A little bit. It's already hot. Doritos? No, I see Doritos. That's what I'm thinking. You're talking about like regular Doritos? Oh, yeah. I'm talking about any Doritos. Hot, hot sauce. No, I'm going to have oh, to say Hot that. sauce on Doritos? Yeah. I'm game for that. <laughs> but you won't eat fish and spaghetti. Girl. No. I'll, I'll eat girl. fish and I'll eat spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. God. I I okay. Alabama. Okay, awesome. See, I'm with you, Ken. I'm with you. Can I share mine? From yes, please, please do. Please All right, do. so this is uh, from Brazil. I don't know why we do this. It tastes really good, though. So the next time that you have a hot dog on a bun, I implore you to get a can of corn, <laughs> put some corn on there, okay? You might want to warm it up so it's like a similar temperature, you know? Cooking. What type of corn? Is it cream corn? No, no, no. Whole corn, old sweet corn, okay? It, I don't think it matters what brand, but... <laughs> Oh, it can't be cold corn though. It can't be cold corn. I mean, like, why would you want cold corn with the hot hot dog? I mean, you putting corn yeah, on a hot dog. I, mean, I don't I, know. We'll figure it out. We'll see. <laughs> Let someone do a test. But listen, you get the hot dog, you get the bun, you put the hot dog in the bun, you put the corn, and then you get, you know, the picnic shoestring potatoes that comes in like a, a yellow canister. You get some of those and you put that on top and then you just like that, okay? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> you can't tilt it or else it's all gonna fall out. Like you gotta do <laughs> but it's good. I don't know why it's like a texture, like difference thing. It's very good. I will try that if you try the fish and spaghetti. I think yep. after quarantine, we need to get together and try it. Yeah. Like, hmm. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm down to try it. I'm down to try it. Okay. okay, I think we're ready to bring in our special guest. Okay. okay. I'm so excited. Yep. Okay. So get a lot of this, y'all. We have our first male host on the show this week, and I'm so excited about it. Woo! Yay! Yay! A lot of you guys think that Stembassy is for ah. women only, but you know, it just that just happened by nature. Mm-hmm. But we love the men's too. Okay? <laughs> love the men's. So, we, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our special host tonight, Doctor Tamuka. Please, round of applause. Yes, yes, I am. To be seen and to be heard. <laughs> hey, welcome <laughs> on this show. This is an amazing platform that you all have built, and thank you so much for inviting me. I just love to fellowship with fellow solid scientists and uh, talk about hot topics that are pressing in the moment. So, thank you for having me on. Yes. Tamuka, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do and as a scientist, and so we can get to know you a little better? Yeah, so I'm a biochemistry postdoctoral researcher at the Institute for Protein Design. Um, 
that is at the University of Washington. And I focus mainly on understanding why proteins work the way they work, basically by decoding the structure versus function relationships as it relates to applications in agriculture, in therapeutics, and vaccines, and that kind of stuff. And I also make brand new proteins from scratch using computational biology. So yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you guys. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah super cool. You said one cool word that um, I'm used to saying is that decoding. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <Some> more. <laughs> Yes, so you guys heard that we have a very talented individual here in the mm -hmm. building, along with our amazing, talented, regular cast of scientists. So please take advantage of this special opportunity to ask a cool dude some cool questions, okay? Um, a Re we have a Rian in here, a whole yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Oh <laughs> man. Absolutely. I love right. it. So we got a whole man's here. I, I know. Um, yeah. So so some hot topics, right? We had some things that we wanted to kind of close on that we started talking about last week. And we decided that we wanted to revisit the conversation this week because we felt like we had to do some investigating on our part before we really finished the conversation. <laughs> and that conversation is about the introduction of 5G, fifth generation technology in the tech space. So um, what did we find out, ladies, once we kind of Ooh. dug into the literature about 5G? We found a lot of information. Um, so, okay, I have notes, and I don't want to take up a whole bunch of time on everything that we found. It's like pages. But I'm going to give you like the, the top things that we have. So first, if you don't know what 5G is, it's basically um, the next generation of uh, wireless communication, basically. It, last week, we talked with Ella, who told us about the uh, sea level, I'm sorry, is it sea level or bed, sea bed? I think it's sea bed, like under the sea level. Yeah. yeah. Sea bed cable <laughs> that connect us globally, right? Okay, so how do we do that now as technology progresses? We have to use... Um, a better technology, which is 5G. So a lot of people think that it started in um, China as far as 5G. No, the first place that widely uses it now and is doing pretty good is South Korea, not Wuhan, China. So that's been debunked. There's five particular um, um, technologies that make up 5G and it's millimeter waves, which is kind of like, um, you know, right now we're on a certain frequency and we share that with other devices like we are all using our device right but eventually as population gets um, larger and larger and we have more <laughs> technology more devices um, Wi-Fi is a little small right so it's getting a little crowded and we have to make more room so that's where 5G comes from also um, to go further is like um, small sale and basically what that is is if you look at where I live compared to Raven in New York, there's a lot of buildings, right? Wi-Fi, the the uh, uh, radio signals, they can't burst through glass or buildings. They just keep uh, bouncing off, right? So you need more small t uh, cell towers throughout the city. Whereas in Mississippi, it's kind of rural. You maybe need five or six. I'm just saying a number. Don't quote me on that. But you'd only need a few because there's nothing here. Horses, that's it. So there's, there's that bobcat, right? <laughs> um, that's the difference between. Then there's a massive MIMO. And basically what that is, is, is multiple input, multiple output. So everything is not going out um, at the same time and just interfering with each other. I'm about to show my age. <laughs> but if you remember um, when you were little, for who this applies to, you pick up the phone, you can actually hear somebody else's conversation. And you're like, wait a minute, who is this talking? And they can't hear you, but you can hear them. So that's that interference that we thankfully do not have to deal with now as technology progr uh, progresses. So that's just another um, um, advance when it comes to 5G. The yes. Can I just interject here? Yeah. I remember doing that, but yeah. like hearing the radio when I was yes. on the phone. Yeah. 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 So we should hear it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> we share that frequency with uh, microwaves, radios, um, your computer, your phone. Right now, we share that frequency. But we have to move out of that as technology and um, more people are, you know, populating our earth, basically. Mm -hmm. It's just getting too crowded. Because if you think about it, in your house, I know you have more than a TV, a microwave, two phones, two <laughs> computers, several tablets. If you have kids, they all have devices. Credit, <laughs> PlayStations, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to go outside of that. So they have to make more room. Then the last two is um, beam forming. Beam forming is basically what it is. It directs the beam to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, and it bounces off those cell towers. So you can get the signal that you need and it goes along with you as you're walking. Like, okay, not to talk. No, I'm not even going to say the name. But if you remember <laughs> on 3G or 4G when iPhones mm -hmm. are this small, <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you walk from one end of your house to the next, you can drop a call. Yeah, so the, the beam was not strong enough to pass through your wall. It it just wasn't going with you. Whereas now you can drive, you know, have your phone on speakerphone, and you're going to Timbuktu, or I can drive to New York. I'm not going to drive, but you <laughs> you can drive anywhere, and your call mm -hmm. will drop. If you do, I don't know who your carrier is, but you may want to check that again. So the last thing is a full display. <laughs> and that's basically um, all the waves. I, I'm not going to get too much into that, but all the, the waves, they have to be decoded in order for the signal to be processed within the towers and within those cell blocks. Um, they, it's kind of like reciprocity. If you imagine two trains going up the same direction, they will crash into each other, right? But if you have a system where you can organize it, where you have like a little hoop or a roundabout, right? They could go the same direction, but they're not passing each other. They go like that. So that's basically what 5G is. But it's still fairly new. So we don't, that's where the conspiracy comes from. That's just a short little tidbit as far as what it is. But Amanda did some really great research as far as how it impacts our health. Yeah, so uh, I did some stuff on the human stuff, and I think Ariana looked at some things to do with birds, if she wants to talk about that too. Um, but basically, so I was looking at, there's a couple of reviews that I was going through, and I looked at um, some of the, the governing bodies that, like, say how much radiation, like, EMF waves were allowed to have, and, like, who sets that, and what they're, you know, using um, as a safety measure. And... So far, uh, there's not been a strong consensus. Like a lot of scientists are seeing like different things. And I started looking at some of the studies and looking at some of the articles that we would have seen as like lay people and like how we're getting these ideas of 5G. And one of the interesting things is I saw one article that um, the experimental method they used, the beginning of their range was already above what we would be exposed to normally. And then obviously, anything that's in excess is going to be bad for us. Too much water is bad for you. Too much Advil is bad for you. Too much sugar, right? So this paper saw like um, some adverse effects and then was later cited in a popular science like article that you would see on Google or, you know, your Twitter newsfeed or something like that. And they're saying, oh, this cited, this study saw uh, detrimental effects from 5G. But it's like some of these studies aren't exactly looking at, okay, is it dangerous to humans in our in our environment here? They're just seeing, is it dangerous, right? So those are two different questions. Um, and I think there needs to be more, uh, more studies coming out that are showing the effects as we are experiencing them in like, I don't wanna say the wild, but like, you know, like in our day to day. <laughs> um, and Chanel did find a study that is gonna be coming out. We found the abstract and it's gonna be coming out in May. Um, and that will be, it was looking at how the 5G affects in like environment for the humans, you know, how we are now. So when that comes out, we can update you again. Um, basically, I think there needs to be more studies and better controls. Even one review, they looked at like 45 papers that were done in biological systems. And they looked at like, did they have control groups? Did they have like regular exposures? Did they take into account distance, all that stuff? And uh, if you take in all that, only like five of them were actually like fit all those boxes of having all those controls and um, take into account our environment. Um, so there definitely needs to be more studies. It needs to be uh, better like designed to really be applicable to understand what's happening to us currently. 
So, and I just want to piggyback on what um, Amanda said before Ariana gets into her a, a different portion of the 5G. <laughs> What's important about um, what Amanda just said about the study that I sent everybody today that's coming out um, May 2021, the asterisk is available. And so in the abstract, what they said was um, that right now, current experimentation or current studies that are looking at the effects of 5G are missing a couple of things. They're saying that right now we don't have the um, the ability to assess how it's going to behave or affect humans at the cellular level because what it can't measure is it can't measure the actual waves in two different um wavelengths i guess the way that it bounces off of things mm -hmm. and then also how it affects um not just cells but systemic effects in humans and so i think it'll be really interesting when we come back to that to see what they found when they say that we don't have the data or don't have the capacity to get the data for the things we need to be looking at versus mm -hmm. just you know so that's important too. Exactly. That is really um, important. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess I will take it now. Um, let's see. Can I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure this out. Um, so I heard some conspiracy theories that some uh, that five G radio waves killed birds, especially a notable die off in I do believe the Netherlands, and that has been debunked by um, a. a who is this? A biophysicist at the California Institute of Technology. Um, he said that 5G does not kill birds um, and it is not currently known to harm birds. They did do a previous study where they did find that AM radio waves can affect a bird's um, ability to detect the world's magnetic field for like migratory routes and stuff, which is very interesting. And um, Kershavink was uh, the biophysicist on that paper. So if you're interested in that, check that out. But as far as we know right now, 5G is not having any effect on birds or wildlife. But I, um, after a brief like search in the literature, I didn't find much on it other than that reference to the um, investigating AM radio waves on it. So I kind of like Amanda was saying, I think more studies need to be done to see what effect it really is gonna have. Do we know if there's any studies in South Korea? Because they're, they've they been using it now for a year. I can check. The problem is sometimes um, not all people publish in English. Gotcha. So, but I can check and see if there's anything in English coming out of South Korea. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know about on the wildlife front either. Same thing. Don't always necessarily publish in English. <laughs> okay. That is really cool that you at least found that study that is actually showing efficacy in living beings. You know, that would be something that would be the most relevant to us. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's, you know, it's bystanders, you know, because the birds are not really causing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there's a correlation and yeah. argument to be had there. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and um, and like the the person who has studied similar effects on birds said, they just haven't seen any evidence that five G does anything. Granted, I'm not sure if any study has been published on that yet, and it was on a different type of radio wave, anyways, that they um, did their investigation on. See, that's the thing. Yeah, study the right waves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to see where it goes though, because that, you know, leading into that conspiracy theory and until, you know, how it's causing the coronavirus, like viruses come from technology. No, they don't. <laughs> Unless it's a virus on your computer, we're not getting into that. But no, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it is not true. Not true. I think, I think most of the people in the chat, they said they feel the same way. Yeah. Oh, Kim made a good comment. <laughs> I agree, Kim. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think like conspiracy theories, you know, are natural and and it's something that, you know, is part of the human experience. <laughs> like who doesn't like to theorize and then, you know, be proven right when something uh -huh. happens or to find some little piece of evidence to be able to point and be like, mm -hmm, see, I told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all like doing it. <laughs> but yeah. where it becomes harmful is where we ignore yeah. that actually shows that something you know is, is is completely disproven, and we keep on focusing our resources, our attention mm -hmm. on that, ignoring the real threat that is looming 
um, that we could be tackling. And so that's that's the biggest problem with conspiracy theories that I see, I think. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, thank you for conducting this research, guys. We have everybody in the comments are agreeing with us um, and it, but it's okay if you don't agree. Like this is a place for us to have discourse. So it, let us know if you think viruses come from technology. Like we, we want to hear your opinion, right? You know, yeah. it, it goes, it goes both ways. Um, but we. I don't want to hear your opinion about fish and spaghetti, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we can. There's something to learn from everybody here. So, uh, the interesting interesting things here in the chat. Um, somebody's grandma believes the 5G Corona conspiracy. Really interesting. Um, yeah, really, I feel like my dad might, but I don't want to bring it up. You know. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Don't put them on blast tonight. Oh my gosh, that'll be a long conversation. Um, yeah. Oh no, Raven. Oh no, she froze. No, Raven's frozen. Mine froze. That's a good screen capture, though. That's a good place to get frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good picture. Look cute. <laughs> oh, Wait, That's, cute. Ah, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yo, I'm frozen now, so. I'm unfrozen? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I was frozen. Everybody froze for a second. I was like, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> Words. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking speaking on um, the coronavirus, right, we've been noticing, and uh, it's been said in the media and during the White House press conference by um, Dr. Anthony Fauci? Fauci? Mm -hmm. How do you say his name? Fauci? He made a point to he made it a point to recognize the issues of racial um, health disparities mm -hmm. in our country and how the coronavirus pandemic is um, disproportionately affecting uh, minority communities particularly the black community so I wanted to kind of talk about that tonight. I know that we have um, some public health experts and also people who are really, really um, passionate about talking about health disparities. So if anybody wants to kind of pick up a baton on this topic, it's all yours. Tag me in, coach. <laughs> okay, Dr. Tabuka, you go first. <laughs> yeah, this is something I am very uh, passionate about. And let me just say, Dr. Fauci has been my just like guiding light on the news. You know, when things start getting dark and you're going into the tunnel of bad news, Dr. Fauci pops up and he's like the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's always good to see him. And I really appreciated him not just addressing the health disparities that exist between historically marginalized communities like Black people, Latinx, as well as LGBTQ people, but he did it in front of, you know, administration and people with disregard of how, you know, maybe people might not feel the same way about acknowledging the existence of these problems that have plagued America and really like globally, right? If you think about the um, AIDS epidemic that happened, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s, and you can see the marginalized communities that were most affected and disproportionately so were those in the black community as well as the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and these were communities that were clearly already having systemic issues that uh, were, were faced before that time. And now the pandemic or the epidemic at that time was just exacerbating those disparities at that time. And so they were the most affected. Now, when you cut to COVID-19 today, now when we know what we know is that herd immunity is our biggest sort of uh, solution to this, which is why social distancing is so important. But this, that what this means is that the weakest amongst us, the most vulnerable amongst us, can directly affect all of us. And so, while maybe in the 60s and 70s it was okay, and you could you know ignore that marginalized community, you really cannot do that now. Not just because you know we you know. 
people who look like us are dying, which you know, which is horrible, and you should feel bad. But even if you don't feel bad, you should be interested in trying to find a solution for your own sake, you know, and to find out why that is. And so, yeah, I would love to have a little bit of a conversation back and forth. I have some ideas as to why that is, and there've been a couple studies and a number of different uh, posts that have been published online as to why this is. Uh, but I, I I mean I could I could start, but I, I would love to hear, you know, some of the thoughts that you guys already have before I go into it. Yeah. You said that, you know, when it comes to those that are at greater risk and how they can infect so many of us, well basically everybody, how does that relate into if you go out and you're wearing a mask and you know my kids they're wearing a mask. What about everybody else that's not wearing a mask? Like, how does that work? Yeah, and so when it comes to masks, and my understanding is masks, while the most, oh, did you want to tag in? I think she's cutting no. <laughs> The co-host, we have a new co-host. <laughs> it's the cat, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I think, well, well, most people uh, uh, associate with masks as in, oh, you know, a mask is going to protect me when I walk outside, when in actual fact, masks are supposed to protect everyone else from you. So with COVID-19, you could be asymptomatic and actually spread the virus. Like uh, in your last embassy, you know, uh, last week, somebody was uh, coming from Georgia and say, you know, their governor just found out that asymptomatic people can actually spread the virus. You know, all of us were like really surprised that how do you not know that right now? But it is, it is not common knowledge in some circles. And so, you know, and, and but that's what masks are for. Masks are supposed to protect the rest of the public for those of us who may be sick and those of us who may be sick and not know we're sick, that's what a, uh, asymptomatic means, right? And so wearing your mask and being vigilant with your mask while outside is a good idea. And not to know crochet masks, you know, <laughs> the point because of all of those holes right there, you're just gonna be coughing and sneezing and spreading that anyway. And so wearing our masks, but also knowing the proper use of wearing those masks and you don't need any of the really intensive, you know, N94 masks. No, you don't need any of those. You, you just need something that covers your face completely um, so that uh, when you cough or sneeze or when you're communicating, you're not actually accidentally letting droplets of liquid fly that potentially might have uh, the virus in them. Can I jump in with something? I heard something, um, I forget what show I was listening to, but it really resonated with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a great example. They were um, pointing out, you know, COVID-19 is spread by droplets when you cough, sneeze, talk, et cetera. And they go, go stand up next to a mirror and breathe and talk, you're gonna see it fog up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now wrap a bandana around your face and go try and talk to the mirror again. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see a big de decrease in the amount of uh, fogginess that you see on your cold mirror. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was like a great visual so you can see what you're doing to protect your droplets from getting all over everyone else. Yeah, I love that. A great example. Mm -hmm. a great example. That's such a good point. And even you can extrapolate that to when it's really cold outside and you're walking outside and all you have to do is say hi. But we probably oh. need to imagine that it's always cold all the time and your breath is just going everywhere. <laughs> and that's how you can visualize the, the spread of how this is going. And so when it comes to particularly marginalized communities where you know we don't have access some community, you know, okay. Social, socioeconomically uh, marginalized communities might not have access to these masks. Might not have access to resources like, you know, you know, hand sanitizer, all this kind of stuff. And so, what then happens when something like this that's affecting everyone uh, affects them? They basically suffer the brunt of all of already the the piling on of the penalties on top of this, which is why I think now we're seeing these inflictions of these large disparities in death caused from uh, coronavirus. Like for instance, in Chicago, uh, while the population only makes up like, you know, a quarter of the population, black people making up the quarter of the population, or the number of deaths are disproportionately way more with black people as opposed to anyone else. Almost three quarters of the deaths are black people. And that's kind of ridiculous, okay? Because at the end of the day, the entire human race, whether it's the human race, the human community, whether it's black, white, Asian, 
you know, apple bottom green, anything, you know, whether it's between genders, whether it's between ages, our genetic material is 99% identical. Like I'm talking about the language our DNA speaks the coding is 99% identical. The differences between men and women, races, ages, they all amount, sum them all up, sum out genetically to be less than 0.2% <laughs> of contributing. And so when we face this enemy, which is essentially just genetic material wrapped in the caspid, it does not care who it affects. It affects everyone across the board. However, we do know that even though our genetic differences are so minuscule, our lived experiences are the ones that really informing why some communities are way more vulnerable than others, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Go ahead, Amanda. Uh, I was going to say, I think a lot of it um, is like things are already stacked up against these communities. Like especially if you if you need a mask and you can't buy one, there's none in the store. We're like, where are we supposed to get them? And then I don't know if you guys have seen like any of the Twitter videos, but there was on the public transportation, the police were pulling people off the, the buses or yeah. the trains or whatever if they didn't have masks. And it's like, why are we, why is like the infrastructure unable to give people who need masks, masks instead of like pulling them away from the transportation? Obviously if they get somewhere, if they're trying to go anywhere, they're probably, you know, like a, an essential worker that has to get somewhere. So it's like, these are already someone that's like, unable to not work, you know, mm -hmm. during this time, this pandemic, they have to go and expose themselves and you're not, like there's nothing there to help them as much um, when there is such a disproportionate, like structural thing, keeping them from getting these masks. That definitely goes back into, you know, not to say that, you know, we're perfect, but we did say that in the first episode, we just do not have the, <laughs> the infrastructure for this, not just being prepared for how to deal with a pandemic, but we're not even doing healthcare right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're separating people based off of their, you know, maybe genetics or their race or something like that. But that's not accurate. And you look at it from an academia standpoint, even that causes bias. So when there's a bias that's not um, true, and we're working off of that, and then you bring it into like law or policy, I mean, these people are they're left out. And, you know, my mom, she lives in a, a neighborhood that I grew up in, but, you know, I'm like trying to get in touch with her so I can send her things, you know? And I'm like, I go around, if I do drive in that area, that's where I see most of the people just out and about, not knowing what's going on. And I did, you're right, I saw, I saw the video, but I did see somebody in Memphis, <laughs> in Memphis get pulled off of a bus. Wow. And I was driving by and I'm like, not to know, not to think that that was it. I'm thinking something else happened, but now yeah. that you say that, I'm like, I wonder, was that yeah. it? Yeah, it's it's not right. Yeah, and I mean, things like that, the systematic, uh, systemic racism that definitely contributes to making this situation way worse for those marginalized communities is something definitely that is an ongoing fight and I think will be a fight for a really long time. It's also a fight that I think us as STEM ambassadors have been fighting. Like I definitely want to shout out like all of you guys, the hosts who have, you know, built this platform by showing more visibility of uh, underrepresented minority communities or uh, URM communities in science allows the information to be out there because you know, one thing, while we can fight and, you know, try and, you know, control racism, that is an ongoing battle. Yeah. One thing that we can do with ourselves is make sure that our communities have access to correct information, um, are not, you know, focusing and, and channeling resources towards theories that are not based and grounded in in facts or, or reality. And, and the faces of that are, are like us, the people who have the information. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we have information in a specific topic and we share that amongst everyone else in our community. We, our community will hold us account accountable easier. And so then we can be fact checked. So it's a, it's a way to yeah. you know, have that system and, and, and things in place. And so, yeah, I encourage any URM of color who has any kind of science backgrounds to really use their voice right now and their platform to talk and really drown out all of those crazy conspiracy theories. Well, you know, let's not say crazy. <laughs> All those conspiracy theories that are not factually correct, <laughs> like the one we spoke about in the 5D. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs>
What were you going to say, Chanel? I think you were going to you say something. Well, I think that, so, and, and again, public health hat, okay? And also, okay. lived experience hat. Put on the hat before you got to, got to. Public <laughs> health hat and lived experience hat. On, okay? Public health hat. So, <laughs> so public health hat. So, the who defines um, health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being. And it's not merely just the absence um, of disease or infirmity. So, so that's what public, that's what health is. It's defined by the WHO or the World Health Organization. Okay. It's not just not being sick. It's mental, physical, it's, it's all, it's the whole being, right? And I think what's really important that we're missing here in the conversation when we talk about health disparities is that the communities that are disenfranchised or being hit the hardest right now yeah. have their lived experience, especially when it comes to public health and when it comes to having access to a healthy state of mind and healthy physicality, those things don't exist. When you think about the communities we're talking about, they're being hit the hardest. These are communities that have food deserts. But they don't have access to the foods that others that others have. They may not have a grocery store in their area that's within walking distance or uh, a bus ride. So they may have to get their fresh fruits and vegetables if there are any available from a corner store. They're going to be more expensive. It's like going to 7-Eleven and getting an orange. It's going to cost you more at 7-Eleven than it would going to a giant or whatever grocery store that you all you know you go to. So I think there's there's systematic things in place that make it hard for people in certain communities to be healthy as a whole. And so when you lack those things, like basic nutrition, you are already coming in um, behind in the game. And so when you have something like COVID affecting you, people that have or are at risk for high blood pressure, asthma, um, things like diabetes. And those things are, are really, really prevalent in these kind of communities because of where they live. And you think, well, asthma is something that you kind of environmental, like, yeah, it is environmental. So think about it. If you live in, this, in a really urban area or an area that hasn't been built, uh, a built environment, it's not a built environment. It's like just a, a regular area that's not maintained. Think about the bus lines that go through right by your house. Mm -hmm. Think about all of the, the air pollution and smog. Think about the industrial, the, the uh, people that live next to plants and whatnot. You know, so those things all play a role in, in how you are overall as a healthy person. And so people in these areas don't have the same health outcomes in general when we talk about health. So now you add COVID into the mix and it's just, it's a cluster. So I think that, again, when we talk about health disparities and we talk about minorities or marginalized communities, we have to really, really think about these structural things that are in place against these, this population. I think that's very, very important to, to put into the mix. We can't just say, oh, they don't have, they don't have, they don't have. I think there's a reason they don't have. It's structural and it's been there for decades. It's, it's been there for quite some time. This is not a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think that's important to add. Yeah. Sorry. No, that was wonderfully said. And that's important to know that this is not new. Like you were saying it is. It's like this has been building against them for a while. Such a great point. Thank you so much for highlighting that. Thank you guys for being open to that. And then also Kim had mentioned something about, she said she heard that you had to be more than six feet from someone mm -hmm. if you're exercising. And I just want to bring that to, um, to speak to that just a little bit. So when you are exercising, you're exerting more force from your lungs, obviously. So when you're exerting more force, it's gonna have more of a, dis it's gonna travel farther. So the reason for that is not because, that statement is true. They're not saying it just to say, oh, be careful. They're saying it because just basic physics, the more energy you're exerting, the more force you're gonna be pushing out the breath in your body. That's what that's about. And I hope that makes sense. That makes total that sense. Makes sense. Thank you That's so much. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Uh, that was our resident doctor of public health. Okay, <laughs> Put some respect on her name. <laughs> That's all around. Her own thank personal you, thank you, thank Anthony you, thank Fauci. You. Okay, it's if not better. Okay. Right. Wait. Which hand uh, on it? Respect on it. Give me some hand claps in the chat. <laughs> Anyways, that's it too much. Um, and we, we just started building our website. It's not quite, you know, into shape yet. All right. We are a new organization. We're getting organized, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we will be putting up recaps of each of our Stembassy live programs on our website. Uh -huh. And we will also recap some of these hot topics that we've touched on and give you 
a few resources so that you can continue investigating these points of interest on your own. And, um, you know, potentially we will have some of our hosts add a little bit more of their opinions if they weren't able to share everything in the time frame that we have our live session. So um, thank you so much, everyone, in the comments for participating. Awesome conversation. Um, and I think we're ready to move on to our next topic. So, yeah. next topic. Next so, topic. Uh, yeah. We Okay, okay. Yeah, you sound uh, effects. Yeah, we, we gotta hook it up. Sorry, I just it. Let's see what what can we do. Um, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> can you do that? Oh, I love it. Hey. Yeah, we're gonna get copyrighted on YouTube. Y'all be careful with that. Oh, <laughs> okay. Wait, sorry, wait, wait, before, sorry. Before you go, Raven can say one thing. Can I say one thing you want to point out? Let's just give a hand clap for Ariana's hair. It was quite lustrous. Yes. You guys yes. are having a hard time yesterday. <laughs> yes, the hair came out great. <laughs> did, did you I use the jojoba oil? That I did? <laughs> did, you, did you use the jojoba oil that I was suggesting to you? I can't. I think the conditioner might have jojoba oil for all I know. I don't know. Oh my God. I'm joking. <laughs> It's beautiful. It really is. I just, I thank you. Thank you. Yo, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. She worked very hard on this, I'm sure. She did. Um, so our, by the way, our website is stembassy.org. Stembassy.org. Yeah. Okay. A lot of great things coming. Uh, we will share as we can. Um, but y'all stay tuned for a whole shenanigan, okay? If you thought that this was cool, Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better buckle up. <laughs> okay, buckle, buckle, up baby. buckle it all the way up because we are taking over. All right. Okay. So I think that, you know, we've, a lot of you are return uh, viewers, right? Yeah. I recognize a lot of people in the chat, a lot of familiar names, and we appreciate you guys coming. We want to take some time today to let you guys in a little bit closer to us and get to know about how we came into STEM, what our stories are, what our journeys are, um, because our stories are a big parts of who we are today and why we have the views that we have and why we're so passionate about what we do, whether it be in science, tech, engineering, math. Um, we all come from different paths. Some of them were straight, some of them were narrow, some of them were wide, some of them were like curly, whirly, wiggly, Piggly girl. Um, so I think I want to start with our special guest, Dr. Tamuka. Do you mind? This yeah. is kind of on the spot. I'm not sure if you were prepared to share your story, but we would love to hear about how you came into STEM. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? Yeah. Just give us everything. Oh. Don't we hold it. All right. We want to keep it real. So what you yeah, got? yeah, I, I I will jump in. Yeah, when you uh, stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so I originally am from Zimbabwe, actually, which I'm wrapping right here. Hey, Yay, Zimbabwe. This is the geographic map of my country. Uh, it is in Southern Africa, right next to uh, South Africa. It's the little teapot that's there. Um, and yeah, so I grew up, born and raised there, um, moved to America at the age of 19 to pursue STEM. I grew up knowing that I was going to be a scientist, but I didn't know how, because nobody around me was a scientist. Nobody, you know, in my family was a scientist. My father was a factory worker. My mom was a secretary. Uh, they would see me, you know, taking little small creatures and putting them in jars. And my mom was like, oh, he's either going to be a serial killer or <laughs> a yeah. let's try and push towards the science. <laughs> and so they definitely encouraged even whatever that I did in that realm, even though they didn't re really know what are the implications of, say, essay tests or you know, anything. So the internet for me was my best friend because that really allowed me to do a lot of research and really figure out, OK, who can I talk to? Who is what? path is out there. And so when you're talking about straight paths, I don't even know what that looks like because, you know, I was really trying to figure it out. And so fortunately, 
And you know, what people know about Zimbabwe is that we've been facing quite a lot of economic and political turmoil for the last two decades. And so you can imagine what ha this has done to the uh, STEM opportunities and uh, just in any kind of infrastructure in our schools and universities. And so I knew I needed to leave the country if I really wanted to pursue that dream. And so I really just shot my shot all over the world, <laughs> applied to many different places. And fortunately, a uh, historically black college called Claflin University in Orangeburg, South Carolina, reached out to me and they gave me a little Claflin incentive scholarship, which was fifteen hundred out of twenty thousand dollars of the whole. <laughs> which, which you know it was a drop in the bucket, but it really lit the fire underneath me to be like, oh, okay, okay, somebody wants me. Okay, all right, all right, cool, okay, cool. And so after a lot of hustling and a lot of begging, <laughs> you know, my me and my parents were really able to gather something and um, send me off and come to America. And so, yeah, I did four years at Clark University. In my second year, I was able to actually get a full ride, finally, after <laughs> more applications. Okay. And that's when I was introduced to research. Um, during summers and uh, breaks, like spring break and fall break, um, we had to leave the dormitories. And, you know, most Americans would go to their American homes. Uh, my home was, you know, 1,900 mm -hmm and 75 miles away. So <laughs> I needed to figure out where I was gonna go. And so that's how I got into research was applying to research um, uh, research opportunity programs. So REUs -E or uh, summer uh, research opportunities as well. Yeah, and so uh, and they would provide room and board. I was a little stipend during that time. And then I just discovered that I actually like research. <laughs> I actually like, following through with what I used to do as a kid, you know, now I can actually do it and be and be paid to do it, you know, answering questions in a methodical way and actually getting a result that either says, yes, you were right with your assumption or hypothesis or you were wrong. And I really fell in love with that. And in particular, I had a really great mentor uh, who helped me with my uh, senior thesis, Dr. Nicholas Panasic, and he identified that, oh, you are really proficient in biochemistry. You should really focus on proteins in particular. And so, when I left and graduated Claflin, you know, uh, cum laude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that is, and that is. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, I wanted to pursue what does research do for me in terms of career opportunities? Because again, at that point, uh, the people who I had to rely on were either, you know, mentors I reached out to or, you know, the internet. Because um, I'll tell my parents, you know, I'm, I did this research opportunity and they're like, okay, you're not on drugs. Great. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and so, um, so I, I, you know, I looked around and I found a postdoctoral uh, scholars program. This was at Novartis Institute for uh, Research. This is in Cambridge. So I did a year and a half. I had a mentor who reached out to me, Anastasia Bassad. She was amazing. She literally uh, came all the way to Claflin <laughs> as a woman of color, recognized me looking and searching and said, hey, you need to apply for this program. You need to come here. <laughs> and I was able to be paired up with a really great mentor, Dr. Acker, and I work on oncology research at that time and really see that research has applications not just in a theoretical way, mm -hmm. but actually making drugs and therapeutics and contributing to what actually will help people in the future. So in, I had known I didn't want to be an MD because I don't want to be, you know, on call, but <laughs> but I wanted to somehow help as well. And this was, you know, my way of doing that. And so after two years, I realized, oh, wow, I really do like this. And, you know, this little beta test of grad school, it really worked out for me. And so then I started applying to multiple different grad schools and I got my first choice, you know, University of Washington, Seattle. Yes. You know, let me, lie. let me not lie. It was my second choice. It was my second choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, no, so that's the bad. So you know, <laughs> and no. I'm video, encouraging myself and others, and going, if one door closes, don't worry yeah, about it. You want to open? In fact, try it in your house. You know, slam the front door. The back one will open if you know if it's a little bit open and unlocked. You know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what happened. You know, uh, the my second choice accepted me, and I came to University of Washington in Seattle. Moved here uh, for five years. I pursued my PhD under the tutelage of Dr. Baker, uh, designing proteins in an effort to understand the biology as well as the structure behind the stuff and the function. And um, that really 
really helped me really kind of get a footing on what I want to do for the rest of my life. But during my time in Seattle, which is very, very white, I realized <laughs> <laughs> that in most rooms, I was the only person of color, you know, and Hello, I'm seeing hands raising up like <laughs> a few of you. This is a word, right? A word. <laughs> and while in the beginning stages of uh, my, my grad school career, I was like, you know, even coming here, I was like, well, it shouldn't matter. It should be fine because it's all, you know, erased is not supposed to affect my work, you know, and that was the, my mindset, you know, but two years in with microaggressions, with uh, never having anyone relate to me about things that are culturally important to me, people not understanding my lived in experience, being stopped and frisked multiple times by campus police. Are you serious? That was happened. in your mind. That was all in your mind, doc. That was all in your mind. What lived experience? It's not yeah. <laughs> Say more on that because that's that's sarcasm, right? So say more on that. <laughs> For a second, I was like, oh, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, we can't do that. It's, it's a little, it's a little a satire, right? Because that's what yeah. people do. they tell you. It's all in your mind, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's right. We're all the same, you know. I don't. Or, or this is a good one too. You need thicker <laughs> skin. No, I need to say treating you like you've been treated. Like, really? No, I don't think you're scared. You don't right. even say you disrespectful. How about that? Right. How about that? Let's say that. And so not really uh, finding uh, um, that, that community that, that um, would relate to me in that way at that time pushed me to really go back and revisit my YouTube career. You know, I was able to have an access to the internet. Again, it's always been my friend, you know, as I went back to that and, you know, uh, I was able to, you know, launch my, you know, you know, YouTube channel and start talking about things that were important to me. And at that time, that happened to be Nicki Minaj. That happened to be Scandal. That happened to how yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was able to really cultivate a community of friends. And then some of those friends turned out to be scientists. And I was like, oh, hey! yeah, no, right? <laughs> <laughs> and now, you know, I have a whole host of friends. And um, now I realize, you know, I really want to not just stop there because for the next Tamuka who's joining you know, the University of Washington, I want him to not have that experience, you know, of not being understood or or, or having an imposter syndrome that's built on mm. a racist <laughs> narrative that, you know, somehow black people are inferior or some thought or, or, or something of the sort, you know? And so I wanted a person, a new Tamuka to be able to come in at the University of Washington or any other degree program and be like, oh, I have some resources that I can come in when things like this happen. And so I really started doing a lot of outreach. I pushed for my lab to do quite a lot of outreach. Um, the Institute of Protein Design is a hundred people. And when I joined, you know, they had 1% black. Oh, um, you know, <laughs> right, I was the 1%. <laughs> but after graduating and being the first black race, graduate of that lab, we now have way more black people. Not enough, you know, five, uh, but we have we, we have a lot. And, and I think that is because of the willingness of the administration to really listen to their students and to sponsor, you know, recruitment activities, as well as to help us really kind of negotiate um, a, a way of uh, uh, figuring out what are the disparities? What is, how do we cultivate inclusion uh, through multiple conferences? Uh, there's a Women in Science Symposium that was started by a number of really wonderful, powerful scientific collaborators in our lab, Parissa and Una. I, I could spend the day naming people here. And in fact, Chanel was a guest host for our book club <laughs> at the Women in Science um, and coming in. And because that's how these connections happen, right? When you People, you know, are not in, not always intending to be racist. They are really just including and uh, in, 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 uh, inviting people that they know from their network. But if your network is all white and, and <laughs> is not diverse, then you are always going to be inviting and giving opportunities mm -hmm. to people who are of color, you know? And so by expanding that network and having people who are coming from different backgrounds, we can now start having people who are, who are being invited from all over the spectrum. And so knowing that, I decided to take the full mantle of becoming not just a recruiter, but also a STEM educator and living visibly open, you know, gay as gay and black, you know, on YouTube in my regular life, but also as a scientist, really just being successful in my own skin. Um, um, and so, yeah, so now I'm a postdoctoral researcher. I'm still working at the Institute for Protein Design. I'm working on a couple, you know, vaccine projects as well as uh, my interest in agriculture. 
So back last year, I filed a patent on my molecule that I created from scratch. Come on, props in the freaking comments. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, property in science. Yes, right? yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. And I found one way to really encourage more um more people of color to come to science to dispel that myth that we are, you know, intellectually inferior mm -hmm. is to equate myself with rappers, you know, or sports people, you know, who are making the same amount of bank that honestly PIs are making, you know, principal investigators or mm -hmm. CEOs of uh, drug companies, you know, who are, are keeping it low profile, but they're making bank, the same amount of bank as all of these other hip hop artists or sports artists. And so by showing that and really being very vocal and visible, I have seen a number of high school students be like, oh, I didn't know that was a career path that I could yep. have that would, you know, give me financial freedom. I never realized that, you know, and so the more I do this, um, always better. And so I found Raven through actually my uh, <laughs> my hip hop biochemistry uh, show on YouTube. It's a little series that I have where I relate science to pop culture, popular culture in the hopes of attracting a wider audience to science um, in my STEM education pursuits. And I wanted to highlight a woman in science because I love female hip hop. I already told you I like Nikki, I like Beyonce, you know, that's what I love. <laughs> so I wanted to highlight a woman in science who's also a, a hip hopper and so i found raven and i was like oh, i have always wanted to hear electrophoresis in bars and she delivered <laughs> and, and we've been friends ever since. and now i'm so happy to be welcomed into you know the family of all of these stem educators and to be invited onto the show as a guest host so yeah that's my my little path <laughs> thank you yeah thank you so much tamuka like i i learned something about you that i thought i knew everything about tamuka. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the hours we didn't say no oh. more. <laughs> but yeah like you your story is so inspiring because you really just kept going towards what felt right for you without really letting any obstacles truly get in your path and like you just you just went straight for it and i really respect that because you know that's something that a lot of people need to mm -hmm. have in their life is just that perseverance mm -hmm. um to to get over anything Thank you, thank you for saying that. But I won't, I won't lie. It was through the help of so many people. Community is not just something that we talk about as a term, but it's something that affects people's lives. You know, the unity through communication. Community is something that is so important. I would not be here with all the mentors that you know helped me throughout my journey, but also friends and peers who were within my programs, my cohorts. I would not be here without them challenging and sharpening each other along the journey and particularly without my internet friends my internet cousins you guys who i've never actually met in real life but we have oh, such a, a, a camaraderie and oh, we're we friends now then the whole pandemic really like showed me that the internet really is real life in, in <laughs> most you know like I, obviously it's not it's but not yeah, we have but not <laughs> to a new reality where this is okay. Like, <laughs> this, this is okay, this is cool. I I don't feel like I will be acting any different toward y'all if we were all in the same room. It would probably be even more litty, even more yeah. crazy. Like, <laughs> more shenanigans. More shenanigans, it would yes. be so much fun. But like, this is, this is so much fun. Um, especially to have the people in the chat with us kind of joining along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hope they are learning as much about us as, as as we are learning about each other because, you know, our paths are all meandering and we learn something about hearing each other's paths. So I'm really interested okay. to hear everyone else's paths as well uh, because it just, you know, it's it's all part of the community experience, right? <laughs> we all learn from each other's journeys. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess we can all share a little piece of <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was funny. I'll I'll go. Um, <laughs> and I'll I'll make my short, you know, uh as short as I can. So um I'll tell you guys the reason why I made Stembassy, right? And why why I do what I do. So long story short, you know, 
I grew up, loved science. Al Roker was my hero. My favorite channel was the Weather Channel, along with Cartoon Network when I was a kid, okay? Uh, like, if y'all know anything about Al Roker, y'all know how hype he was about the weather. He'd be like, yes. this is what's happening in your neck of the woods. Like, he would, he would, he would, he would, and I'd be like, yeah, that's right, Al, that's right. <laughs> I, he was like hype me up to the fullest, and I so I would get really psyched about looking at the clouds and trying to predict the weather patterns and stuff. And you know, eventually the interest evolved into outer space. I went to space camp um, when I was younger, and um, I then went to a college that was totally science based. I went to SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, and um, th like my my major was environmental policy and law. And then I transitioned into a biology degree. Um, and then I went to grad school, right? So my um, my focus became molecular biology, really similar to Tamuka's field and Amanda's field and Chanel's field, right? Because Chanel's also <laughs> <laughs> uh, We have three molecular biologists on the show. <laughs> three. Uh, four right now. <laughs> and you know, I was really fortunate to have very positive academic experiences during my, just really during my entire academic career, I'm not gonna talk about my doctoral program right now, um, but you know, like, <laughs> throughout up to my master's degree, I had really great role models, um, even though most of them didn't look like me, uh, they were all really supportive people. And I came away from that experience, like really excited about science and ready to get into the workforce and ready to contribute and do research and like, you know, be that girl, HBIC, right? So I get to corporate. <laughs> okay. Um, I graduated on a Saturday with my master's in molecular biology, went to work as a corporate cancer research scientist that Monday. Okay. Wow. And I think I was 23 or as 22. I was 20, I was 20 some somebody, right? <laughs> um, I was very young. And so I go to corporate. I'm a corporate cancer researcher. And I literally did not realize how few people look like me once you leave school, right? Once you kind of get into the real world, I was like, wait a second, what's going on? Um, you know, and that was okay. But what was bad about that was that the culture in that corporate science space wasn't really ready for someone like me. Um, somebody who was really like outgoing, proud of who they are, proud of their culture, um, really excited about science and like, you know, extroverted and just like kind of, you know, like just, I'm out there. Um, and that's like how you see me now is literally exactly how I am. If if not, I'm probably even a little bit more toned down on the show <laughs> because, you know, we in public. Right. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> in public. Um, but, you know, I felt like I really had to change who I was. I had to tone myself down way, way below where I was comfortable, you know, um, really just subduing my whole personality. Um, I was trying really hard to relate to the people around me. They didn't, they didn't have any interest in doing that because they saw me as just too different. Um, and so it became a really lonely space. And it kind of got to the point where I'm like, dang, do I really want to be lonely for my entire career? You know, that doesn't seem like a good mental space. Yeah. Um, and then I realized as I talked to other people who were like me, they also felt lonely in their workspaces in science. So mm -hmm. I ended up leaving. Right. And my when I left, my intention was to, you know, I was going to do everything that I could to change science culture so that I would never have to hear like people in generations after me have the same experience right like experience mm -hmm. the same like level of loneliness level of like outcastery whatever you want to call it um just it just it wasn't right so um there was this one thing i'm gonna tell this one story and then that's it um, so when i left corporate i went to go work in as a professor of biology at a community college and um, I'll never forget this because it happened in the first week. During the first week, I started working there. I had my briefcase, my suit, right? Dressed to the nines. I was ready to go. I was so excited. Um, the secretary of my department informed me that 
I had some mail in the mail room. So I go to walk to the mail room. And as I'm walking to the mail room, there's somebody also walking to the mail room in my opposite direction. And so we're both turning in to get our mail. And instead of the person proceeding like into the actual room, they stop in the doorway. And you know, I'm walking behind them because we're both trying to get our mail at the same time. And now they're blocking me from the room because they wouldn't, they actually didn't walk into the room. They blocked me from the doorway. And so they turn around and they face me. And I'm like, this is awkward because now like we're face to face. And I'm a little confused. I said, uh, just need to move past you. Just trying to get my mail. I introduce myself. It's my first week. You know, nobody knows who I am. So I figure they're a little confused. So after I introduce who I am, hi, I am so and so, professor, blah, 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 of this department. Nice to meet you. They say there's there's no way. <laughs> they literally said there's no way that you work here. And I was like, uh. <laughs> But I'm on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I'm on the payroll. Um, but I'm um, still green. Like everybody else. <laughs> they, listen, okay, all right. So they're like, no, there's no way you work here. Um, so I'm I'm confused. I'm like, ah, there's not really registering that this what is actually happening, right? As it's happening. So, you know, I'm trying to get a better understanding. I'm like, maybe you like something's confusing about what's happening. Um, so what ends up happening, we have a long exchange. I end up having to take out my faculty ID <gasps> and showing it to this woman so that I can prove to her that I am a faculty and I can get my mail, right? She thinks it's fake. <laughs> oh my God, she thought it was fake. So I go to the department with my ID card, right? With my with this woman who I've just met and we're coworkers. She doesn't she doesn't understand this. Um, we go to the secretary and she's like, she works, like, what are you doing? And the secretary was like, What are you doing? You did what? Like, and then she basically diffused the whole situation. The woman said, well, you don't look like you could work in our department. And she just left. You didn't be fired. Did you apologize? Like, no, she didn't no, apologize. apologize. Oh. That's HR, we coming through. Hold right. on. She didn't think she was wrong. Okay. The secretary is mortified. She should I'm think she was wrong. Um, but like that just added more fuel to my fire because I just knew, I just knew I was not the only person who had ever experienced that. No. Right. I know that people have gone through much worse. And when they go through that stuff, they usually kind of quit, right? They're like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not putting up with that. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Yeah. Right? Like, it's, mm -hmm. that was really discouraging. Um, so, you know, again, I made the point where I was like, I'm going to make a platform. I don't know what I'm about to do, but no matter what I do, it's not enough for anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to have to be myself and y'all just have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, and so that's what I did. Um, and that's when Big Old Geeks came out. Big Old Geeks came out as a result of that situation. I was, I was mad. Um, and I was like, well, you know, if you don't believe I work here, well, you're going to watch me work and twerk. Like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, um, that, that is exactly where Big Old Geeks came from. Um, and that's where Stembassy came from. I wanted to make a platform where people could just be their unapologetic selves and talk about science, be known as scientists in their true form, right? Not the form that society presents that we should be in, not the form that the dominant culture thinks that we should take on. Like whatever you present as or whatever you want to come into the room as, do that. Right. While talking about science, if that's what you love. So um, I brought uh, all of these women and I kind of took up a lot of time to talk, tell that story, but I just wanted to give some context as to why we're here. Um, we're all, well, I already did my story. They're gonna be sharing their story next week. Um, and we're really gonna dive into why they became STEM ambassadors and how they pursued their journeys in STEM next week. So um, we're gonna leave y'all on a little cliffhanger. Okay. <laughs> if you thought my story was juicy, I've heard some of these ladies' stories, and they're even juicier than mine. Okay, um, you know, talking about pathways to STEM and how they're not always straight. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a, a unique story. 
Wow. So, well, thanks for sharing. Because I mean, you know, I, I, that is that's awesome, and I'm definitely tuning in next week to hear all the others. <laughs> all because they're, they're mad about this in the comments. Oh, I'm, I'm, mad. Mad. I'm mad that you had to go through that. You'll have to tune in next week. What can I say? <laughs> We're on here every week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, yeah. guys, don't want to miss it. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you so much for having me and letting me share my story and then uh, sharing your story, Raven. That's so important to hear. And, you know, like a lot of us are all, always in our own heads. And, you know, when things happen to us, we think it's a very one, you know, isolating, like it's an isolated event. And then when you hear other people say, you realize, oh, it's not, it's a pattern, you know, Ooh. like. I, you know, like <laughs> I'm sure everyone, well, you know, I, I'm sure uh, some people have a, a similar story to yours, not exactly the same, but a similar story to yours that, you know, that resonates with them. I hear how that jives with a certain experience that jives with mine and you build that camaraderie and that sort of like helps not just the mental health uh, peace of mind, but it also boosts your, yourself to be like, oh, wow, okay, well, I was right. You know, I was right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why it's very important for us to, to be present. Yeah. And not just to be present, you know, on the job, but in media, like what Raven is doing, like yeah. so that people can see and we'll get into this next week. But this is this is exactly why, because I'm pretty sure like the same way. And this is look, no shade to, to you guys. OK, because but I wanted you I want everyone in the audience to see Ariana and Amanda's reaction, how they were totally taken back. And then I think if you go back and want to see my reaction, Jay's reaction and Tamuka's reaction, we're kind of like, yeah, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. So it, because it's one of those things that that lived experience is shared by all. of I guarantee you, all of us have a similar story just yeah. like that. That is yeah. our lived experience. And it's amazing to see people who don't have that lived experience. It's a visceral. They're like, what? It's like, yeah, yeah. every day, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's every day, B, every day. Yeah. It's it's important important point point and it's important to say, you know, don't feel guilty that you don't have that. No, no, no reason. The takeaway here is that our walks of life are all different. They're very different. Not because of our own making, but because of the historical context of the different places that we live mm -hmm. and because of the systematic stuff that is happening. And mm -hmm. so what the takeaway shouldn't be, oh, I feel guilty. I'm going to move away from this. I'm not going to listen. Or I'm going to close my, my ears. Or, you know, I don't want to talk about that because I don't see color. That's that, Those are all the wrong sort of reactions. What you want to do is be like, oh, okay, so I don't have that negative experience. And so I have a privilege in this area is that I am privileged to walk this world without that experience. So how can I use my privilege to amplify the voices of those who who don't have that specific privilege. And I'm talking about this in, in terms of like, even when it comes not just to race, but also to gender. Like I am definitely coming into this space very cognizant of the fact that, you know, I, I have male privilege, not necessarily of my own making, you know? <laughs> it wasn't, you know, a choice of any of the sort, but at the same time I do, you know, like I can go to lab at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and get so much data done and not have to worry about anything. Whereas my female counterparts have to worry about the walk to lab at night the walk back <laughs> you know have yeah, to like okay. grab hold on pause to get into this on that moment okay because i feel like i've actually slept in the lab a few times because i was too afraid to walk home to walk, mm -hmm. <sighs> oh my God. yep it's real life slept in a chair like wow <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. That is that is powerful. And and that's just mm -hmm. one experience. There are many different experiences, you know, that you know separate cis versus trans, you know, uh gay versus straight, you know, whatever is the predominant you know, group is going to have privileges that others don't occupy. Mm -hmm. And so I, one thing that I really have been wanting to talk about for a long time is like the intersection. Where do those intersection of our identities lie? And how can you not look at necessarily how the negatives stack up as to, oh, I have this negative, and, you know, when I'm looking at the black women in this group, you know, it's like, I am facing racism on this side and sexism on this side, you know, that's intersection right there. But there's yeah. also another portion, which is that, hey, I get to have this community of women in this side, and I get to have this community of black people on this side. And so the union versus the intersection of that mm -hmm. is something really powerful and that resonates. And, you know, in some cases, like we were talking, well, uh, in some cases, like I'm afraid of cussing, for instance, in some in sometimes because I don't want to make 
people feel more yes. threatened by me yep. as, as, as a, you know, as a man and as a black man. As a black man, mm -hmm. Societal yeah. impression that we are, uh, you know, violent by nature, and, and so I'm always smiling and cheesing whenever, you know, it's my go-to. It's that extra. Less not yeah. less threatening. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's right. between those faces. So we all have these different, you know, things, and so I think hearing these stories making makes us cognizant of this, and hearing our differences. Uh, doesn't make us feel guilty or make us feel bad, shouldn't make us feel guilty or shouldn't make us feel bad, but should make us aware that this yeah. is how things are and that even in science where you would think rational should prevail, things are not all equal. And so we should have an equitable work environment that makes sense because at the end of the day, the people who do science are scientists and scientists are people. And some of them are people of color. And so let's take that all into consideration. So I really commend you ladies for this, for this, uh, <laughs> for this program. Yeah. 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 Does that yeah. mean it's yeah. time for the yeah. prize, Raven? Is that what that means? It's time for the... <laughs> oh, is that the right one? That was the wrong Wait, button. What? That was the right. That was the wrong button. <laughs> uh, um, it's time for the the. Oh yeah, I like it. You taking me back? <laughs> it's time for the prize. We're gonna have to find a better. Yeah. Sound effects. Okay. So new. Okay. Need you guys to be active in the chat. All right. Active in the chat. Make sure you rep your rep yes. yourselves. All right. Give me a emoji. Give me a word. Something that says we're here. We're listening. For anybody who's new, because we have quite a few people watching both on Facebook and YouTube. All right. We have a um Oh, look at Kimberly. <laughs> oh, Kimberly, okay. Oh, okay, Kimberly, everybody. Okay. Already ready. Okay. Okay. Ready. He has won. He already okay. is ready. Anyway, so we, we, go down. <laughs> we haven't started, we haven't started it yet. I mean, uh, maybe we were going to ask a different question. <laughs> Just a recap for those of you who are new and are tuning in. Oh, this is Embassy, the place where scientists tech people, engineers of math people, people in STEM who are ambassadors to STEM come, we, co we collaborate, we talk about hot topics, we play games, we have fun, we laugh, we drink, we do things, shenanigans, okay. Uh, and we give away prizes every Sunday. Mm -hmm. okay? Usually, usually, we might spice it up soon because we have uh, some interesting things in the work, but usually, yeah. It's in the form of a $5 Amazon gift card. $5, yes, $5, $5. Yes, $5 Amazon gift card. And today we're giving away one $5 Amazon gift card. Yeah. <laughs> that delay was everything. <laughs> so like now we're going to play a game. Every Stumbacy Live, we have a special word that we ask you to remember for the next week's show. Last week, we had a special guest on who helped us learn about a new thing. We want you guys to tell us what the special word was from last week, and it can't be the person who was on the show, okay, with us last week. It has to be somebody who was not a host, because <laughs> we play fair. Mm -hmm. Have you all talked about? Your time well, starts asking now. Questions, asking us questions, we're trying to give away money. Um, mm -hmm. The question has already been answered. <laughs> well, they got type it. Well. well they didn't know the question. <laughs> Starting now. The word of the day. The Starting word of the now. Day. <laughs> she said, Starting now. <laughs> I'm back in the week last week, guys. Kim, just go ahead and put it back in the chat. Copy and paste. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just said it. I just said it. <laughs> He's like, Kim already got it. Does that count? How are we doing this? Yeah. Well, let me say Kim got it. It's so like German. Can you, you phrase the answer correctly? <laughs> oh, look at Kim being a good sport. Oh. Yay, Kim. That's nice. Hey. <laughs> hmm. What you want to do, Raven? Well, look at Raven. She's scared. Yeah, I'll call you, Raven. Raven, what? You know, I'm feeling good today. Okay. I'm giving y'all both five dollar Amazon. Congratulations. That's good. So you guys want to do right. Send your email address to the Stemacy email account and we'll get you all hooked up with your five dollar gift cards. Uh, yeah. Everyone has to the Stembassy. And I hope yes. they buy some weird food. Com, where actually <laughs> Wait, what right? I hope they buy some weird food and see the post about it. What Wait, what have? weird food? So you guys are going to send your email address? I said, I hope the email address. Like weird Listen, buy your food. Oh, yes. Put on your hot dogs and catfish. Which Look. Is yeah. Look, if y'all were not here earlier, we were talking about <laughs> 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 Okay, and what we've been talking about, they've been ragging on me this whole time about my catfish and spaghetti. Look, I'm from Memphis. That's what we do. No, 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 no. Tell them it's catfish, spaghetti with meat, and what else? The white bread, and what else you put on there? Under white bread. bread. Yeah. What? The whole the whole the entire thing. So can cut you up and Okay, no problem. So the whole spread is it's five catfish. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> no problem doing this. It's fried catfish, okay? It is not mixed in with the spaghetti. It's separate, just so you know. It is spaghetti with meat in it, with a side of white bread. Not Sara Lee honey wheat oat. White wonder <laughs> bread, okay? With a green, you can get some greens, collard greens, term greens, real don't matter. Not broccoli. We're not doing that mess. Don't get too healthy. And then maybe a side of pound cake. That's what we do. Maybe That's, what we do. That's, one That's one meal. Right. That's no. one meal. Right. That's one meal. That's one meal. That's one meal. I'm going to come visit you and try it sometime. Yes, <laughs> Can you mail me some here. pound cake for real? Heck yeah. yeah. Look glaze on it. <laughs> Low glaze. Homemade, homemade. Don't go buy from uh, Publix. No, we don't, we don't buy no pound cake. You all got Publix where you are? No, but when oh. I go to Atlanta, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we stand in Publix. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. everywhere in Florida. We, we, have have said we need a photo. We need a photo? Oh, <laughs> shoot. Okay, I'll cook it, and then I'll upload a photo. We'll put it on the site. Oh, like, huh? Kim says they have salad yeah. with their spaghetti and catfish. I mean, you you do that that's fine you can I'm do that I'm, I'm just i'm working that out options as long as you have rum on the pound again yes kim that's good yes, oh, yes. yes. Thank you. you take some pictures and post it on Instagram. Tag, tag. Let's all tag and post some, some weird food combinations after the show. <laughs> I want to see what this looks like. This cat and spaghetti. Mess. Not, I want to see what you, this looks like. Until you try it and you get it from somebody who can cook, save your life. I'm just, oh my goodness. I'm just, just somebody who can cook, goodness. though. It has to be somebody who can cook. Don't okay, guys. Know. I'm just sorry to interrupt. You know, don't do that. Don't do that. Interrupt, but we have to. <laughs> we got to wrap it up. It's time to go. Oh. It's okay. Almost. We have to let them know that the secret word for this week is disparity. And we have a lot yes. of people coming in and out of this chat. So I just want to reiterate the purpose of the secret word. Every week we give away a prize to the person who can first tell us the secret word from the previous week. So next mm -hmm. week, you guys come back and watch Stembassy with us, hang out, Kiki. You're going to give us the word disparity. Okay, I wrote it down. 
in the bio. <laughs> okay. Remember that word for next week, and you will be in the running for a five dollar Amazon gift card. $5, $5, $5. $5, $5, $5. <laughs> yes. All right. The rules of the contest will be up on our website. All right. We're gonna get those rules up there so you guys know whether or not you're eligible because we have some people in here who just be stembassy.org. <laughs> Stembercy.org. Yes. Org. No, it's too early, Robin. <laughs> oh, Robin. Robin <laughs> <laughs> is very. Robin, I'm waiting. I'm back with Robin. Everybody, give it up for mom. <laughs> That's your mom. That is mom. <laughs> Hey, mom. No, I'm saying she's trying to win that five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you owe her. 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 let's see. Let's look at our agenda. It looks like we've. We've hit the end. I think we did it. Yeah, we did. Well, here's the good thing, guys. Okay. Although the show is ending right now, Aww. we have our website, stembassy.org, up, running a little bit. Okay. We're updating it as much as we can, but it should definitely be in full swing by early this week. So if you miss us, if you want to see more of us, you can check our website, stembassy.org, or you can go to our Instagram, Instagram at stembassy. Mm -hmm. You can go to our Facebook, the stembassy, right? Or you can email us, the stembassy at gmail.com with any of your show recommendations, if you have any yeah. comments, if you just want to say, I love you, I miss you. <laughs> we love it. You, you want to be a guest? You want to come on the show? Yeah. You want to be a guest? Come on the show. Don't be crazy. Don't be emailing me no crazy stuff because I will delete. Okay? <laughs> Make sure you keep the science. Here. Keep the science for later, guys. All right. Um, you know, we what we encourage positivity here on the show and good vibes so you know if you're considering coming on make sure you have all of those okay those are our, like bare minimum requirements mm -hmm. <laughs> um and also be in stem right um so uh we we miss you guys we're gonna talk to you guys next week um until next time peace does anybody have any things to say um, should we do the wave? <laughs> yeah, we can't do the wave. I'm going to start it this time. Who, me? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Jay, you ready? Wait, let me get my arm right. Okay, go ahead. Now, why don't you start oh, that the other way? <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, wait, wait, I have a question. Well, am I going to Amanda? I'm going to Jay? No, you start your other arm. The move is starting it. Are you trying? Are you starting it? How are you doing the wave? I need to back up. Okay, okay, here it goes. Ready? Okay, Jay, Jay, you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Always one. I did it. Always one. <laughs> what is this? What is, what is this? What is this? What is this? I'm going to pass it up. We try to pass it up. <laughs> um, we can catch it. I'm gonna pass it up to Raven. Catch it, Raven. Look at Raven. Look at Raven. Look at Raven. You look like a cat. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. Okay, Jay. Jay, you ready? Jay, you ready? Look. Wait, okay. Oh, we're going again. Uh, okay, I'll do it again. Okay, ready, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get it. We can't get it. We can't get it. practice this some more. One of these weeks, tune in. We'll nail it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Everybody, give a peace. Just give a peace sign. We can all do this. Ready? Peace. All right. Peace. Peace. I'll get it later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.